Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to subset a data frame or a matrix by row names using the R programming language. In the video I'm going to show you two examples and in the first example I'm going to show you how to subset a data frame by row names. And for this example we first need to create some example data frame that we can create with lines 2 to 4 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that a new data frame object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called data. And by running line five of the code, we can print this data frame to the RStudio console at the bottom of RStudio. And as you can see, our data frame contains six rows with the row names row one to row six and two columns x1 and x2. Now, in order to subset our data frame based on row names, we also need to specify the names of the rows that we want to keep. And this is what we are doing in line seven of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the C function to specify all names of the rows that we want to keep in our subset. And then I'm storing the output of the C function in a new data object, which is called data keep rows. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see that a new vector object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called data keep rows. Now, if we want to subset our input data frame based on this vector, then we can apply the row names function and the in operator, as you can see in line nine of the code. So in this line of code, I'm first specifying the name of our data frame. So in this case, our data frame is called data. Then I'm opening square brackets then I'm applying the row names function to our data frame and then I'm using the in operator to check whether the row names of our data frame are in our vector data keep rows. Then I'm specifying a comma and then I'm closing the square brackets at the end of the line. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame object which is called data subset. So if you run line nine of the code, a new data frame object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called data subset. And we can print this data frame to the RStudio console by running line 10 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom that we have created a new data frame, which is consisting only of three rows of our original data frame. So in this first example, I have explained how to subset a data frame based on row names. However, it is also possible to subset a matrix based on the row names of the matrix. And this is what I want to show you in the second example, starting at line 12 of the code. So in lines 12 and 13, I'm creating an example matrix. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new matrix object is appearing, which is called MET. And we can print this matrix to the RStudio console by running line 14 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new matrix with three columns and five rows, whereby the row names are ranging from M1 to M5. Now, similar to the first example, we need to create a vector object which contains the names of the rows that we want to keep. And this is what we are doing in line 16 of the code. So if you run this line of code, a new vector object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called mat keep rows. And then in line 18 of the code, we can create our matrix subset similar to the previous example. So again, I'm using the row names function and the in operator to check whether a row should be kept or not. So if you run line 18 of the code, a new matrix object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called mat subset. And we can print this matrix to the RStudio console by running line 19 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that we have created a matrix subset that consists of only three rows of our original matrix. So in this video, I have explained how to subset the rows of a data frame or a matrix using the row names of this data object. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the R programming code of this video in some more detail. And I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.